Over the course of a woman's lifetime, she may experience breast changes, while many end up nothing to worry about. Hello, my name is Amira, and I'll be giving a bit of an introductory to fibrocystic breast disease. What is fibrocystic breast disease? Fibrocystic breast disease are composed of tissue that feels lumpy or look like in texture. It is a type of benign breast disease which is not considered as breast cancer. It is regarded as a part of the physiologic phenomenon where it simply refers to the fact that hormones change throughout the menstrual cycle. FCD is known as one of the first symptoms of estrogen dominance which is increasing level of estrogen. Because of the hormones change, the hormone responsive tissue inside the breast is going to change depending on the level or the type of the hormones that presence in the breast. Common characteristic of FCD are bilateral painful breasts which causing discomfortness of the breast and is prominent every time before menses. Although need to be reminded that not all women will experience this breast pain, tenderness or lumpiness. It is not all uncommon to have fibrocystic breast disease. More than half of the women of age 25 to 50 experience fibrocystic breast changes at some point in their lives. In fact, medical professionals have stopped using the term fibrocystic breast disease and now simply referring to fibrocystic breast changes because having fibrocystic breast isn't really a disease, it is considered as normal. Now, I'll be talking about the causes of FCD. To grow, estrogen is very necessary and it is most of the time balanced before the shrug. In FCD, Estrogen dominance takes place in the body. When your body produces estrogen in excess, it will flow into different tissues of your body, especially the breast. Estrogen stimulates the proliferation of connective tissue and also epithelial tissue. Because of the estrogen dominance, luteal phase is shortened, thus reducing the level of progesterone. The second cause of FCD is because of prolactin level. Prolactin plays a role in the breast growth. Now, prolactin level will be increased due to the estrogen dominance on the pituitary. Suboptimal level of thyroid hormone will sensitize the memory epithelium of the breast towards prolactin stimulation, thus increasing the level of prolactin even more. Women with increased concentration of fat or women with diabetes or fatty liver tends to have more significant fibrocystic changes compared to healthy women. This is the picture for the pathogenesis of FCD. One is because of the increased level of estrogen, one because of the insufficiency of progesterone, and one is because of the hyperprolactinemia or increased level of prolactin. The first risk factor will be the premenopausal status. In premenopausal women, there are hormonal imbalance which make them more prone to getting the fibrocytic breast. Next, the risk factor will be drinking alcohol and caffeine. There is a study shows that the increased intake in caffeine contributes to the severity of fibrocytic breast and the pain related. Next is the neuropathy. Neuropathy is a condition in women that never given birth before. There is a study shows increase in lactations could actually decrease the risk of getting fibrocytic breast. Next, the family, uh, the women with family history of breast cancer are more prone to get fibrocytic breast. The last risk factor would be the oestrogen replacement therapy. Oestrogen replacement therapy may cause the fluctuations in hormones which lead to the breast discomfort and the area of lumping breast become swollen. The signs and symptoms of fibrocytic breast include lumping, rope-like texture in breast, swelling, generalized pain, tenderness in the breast area, pain in the armpit, and greenish or dark discharge that free of the blood. You might be wondering, is there any treatment options available for fibrocystic disease? Well, most patients do not require invasive treatment. However, most management involve the relief of pain. So in order to relieve the breast pain, or also known as nostalgia, medications such as paracetamol and NSAIDs such as ibuprofen can be considered. And patients, uh, especially for women, are advised to wear a good quality supportive bra during exercise and during sleep. And they can also apply heat or ice at the painful area. And patients are gener generally advised to avoid any sports or activities that can impact the breast and try to do mild exercises such as walking, yoga, and pilates. Some studies show that off-label use of hormonal treatment, such as oral contraceptive pills, demoxifen, which is usually used in the HER2 positive breast cancer, and danazole, which is usually used in the treatment of endometriosis, can relieve the pain by regulating the hormonal level. And studies has documented that supplements such as even in primus oil, vitamin B E, fish oil, vitamin B6, and iodine can improve the condition. In extreme cases where medication cannot relieve the pain, so some doctors uh, may consider to remove the fluid from the cyst or for a more permanent solution. A surgery called lampectomy can be are considered by removing the lump from the breast completely. Next, the prevention of fibrocytic breast include. Wear a firm support bra to support your breasts. Wear a sport bra during exercise and while sleeping instead of the normal bra. The third one, limit or avoid the caffeine intake. The fourth one is to decrease the fat in your diet. 
because there is a research show that the increase in the accumulations of body fat actually cause the fat cells in the breast become stiffer. The last one is to reduce or stop taking the hormones therapy with the doctor consultation. Besides, all women should know how to perform the breast self-examination. The self-exam aims to detect significant changes of the breast, be it a woman diagnosed with this condition or not. And as what I have mentioned earlier, that this fibrocystic breast condition is occurring in one for every two women, therefore, all women should make the self-exam as a monthly routine. The more you examine your breasts, the more you will learn about them, and it will be easier for you to tell if there is any changes happening. If you are still menstruating, choose a time in your cycle when your breasts are distended. Basically, your hormone levels fluctuate each month during your menstrual cycle, which affecting your breast tissue. Therefore, the best time for you to perform the self exam is one week after your period ends. However, if you are no longer having your periods, choose any day of the month that is easier for you to remember, such as the first or the last day of the month. So, how do you perform the breast self-examination? So, the first step is by begin looking at your breast in the mirror with your shoulders straight and arms on your hips. So, what you should look for is the breasts are of their usual size, shape and color, and also there is no distortion or swelling of the breast. If you see any of the following changes, please see the doctor. If there is any dimpling, puckering or bulging on the skin, a nipple that is inverted or has changed position, and also if there is any redness, soreness or swelling to the breast. The second step is while still standing in front of the mirror, you should now raise your both arms. Repeat the step one in that position. Also, in addition, you should look for any signs of fluid coming out of one or both nipples, which could be a watery, milky or yellow fluid, or even black. The next step is, while lying down on bed or any other flat surface, you should feel for any presence of lumps or any changes to the lump. So by using the right hand to feel the, the left breast and also use the left breast to feel the right breast. Make sure that you cover the entire breast from top to the bottom and side to side from your collarbone to the top of the abdomen. And the last but not least is, repeat step 3 while sitting or standing, meaning that you should feel any presence of lumps or any changes to the lump while standing. And when many women find that it is easier for them to feel the breast if is when their skin is wet and slippery, so they like to do this step in the shower. So how do the doctors or physicians Evaluate your fibrocystic breast disease or condition. First is by mammogram. So mammogram is an X-ray examination that focuses on the specific area of concern in the breast. Doctor might consider a mammogram if a breast lump is detected or a prominent thickening in the breast tissue. So second is by ultrasound, which is an imaging technique where the images of the breast are produced through the sound waves. It is performed along with the mammogram and it is better in evaluating younger women's breast tissue, i.e. younger than 30 years old. Next is via breast biopsy, which is a procedure that removes a small sample of the breast tissue and they will bring the sample tissue to the lab for testing. There are many questions on whether a fibrocystic breast disease can lead to breast cancer. Well, according to the American Cancer Society, not all fibrocystic breast disease can lead to breast cancer. However, it may complicate the diagnosis of the breast cancer itself. So patients are generally advised to keep track on their, uh, any changes in their breast, especially when the pain persists or worsens, and to do monthly uh, breast self exam as a precaution instead. So now that we have reached to the end of this video, I hope this video can answer all your questions about this disease. And thanks for watching!